Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing thrombosis and antithrombotic drugs. Okay, so we've just discussed aspirin. Now let's discuss the next antithrombotic drug, and the next one we're going to discuss is clopidogrel, which is a drug that we saw when we were actually going through uh, the hemostasis process. Okay, so remember clopidogrel was a competitive antagonist of the ADP receptor on the surface of uh, platelets, okay? So, remember that to get the chain reaction in activation of platelets, what has to happen is your initial platelet has to go and be activated by either collagen or tissue factor. It will then release thromboxane A2 and also adenosine diphosphate, ADP. ADP will then activate other platelets by binding to the ADP receptor on the surface of the uh, platelet, and that will then trigger the activation of this platelet, and this platelet will then un release thromboxane A2 and then more ADP. So you get this chain reaction of activation of more and more platelets. If you use clopidogrel, then clopidogrel will bind to the ADP binding site on the ADP receptor, but not activate the ADP receptor, so not cause the activation of the platelet. All it will do is stop the ADP from being able to bind, um, and therefore stop the activation of the ADP receptor by the ADP. So it's a competitive antagonist. Okay, so it doesn't inhibit the ADP receptor. Instead, it prevents the activation of the ADP receptor. So that's what a competitive antagonist is. Okay, so if you do this, then what's going to happen? Well, it means that the only platelets which are going to be activated are the ones which have actually come into contact with collagen or tissue factor. So it stops this um, uh, cascade, basically. It stops this chain reaction. And if the only platelets which are actually going to be activated are the ones which have come into contact with collagen or tissue factor, then uh, the amount of platelets you'll actually get activated is feeble. So you won't get that much thromboxane A2. So this stops the massive rise in thromboxane A2. So you only get a tiny rise in thromboxane A2, which isn't going to be powerful enough to cause much vasoconstriction. It also means that you're not going to get the activation of the GP2B slash 3A receptor on the platelets, and therefore your platelets aren't going to be able to become sticky. So you're not going to get platelet aggregation, and you're not going to get vasoconstriction. So this is a powerful antithrombotic because uh, it will stop uh, the rise in thromboxane A2 which occurs in uh, the formation of a thrombus. It will then mean that you don't get any vasoconstriction and you don't get the platelet aggregation. You will still get the platelet adhesion, so you'll get the first layer of platelets bound to the endothelial cells, but you won't get platelets stacking on top of there to form the uh, bulk of the thrombus. So that is how clopidogrel stops the formation of thrombi. Okay, so uh, the next type of uh, antithrombotic drug I want to talk about is a glycoprotein 2B, okay, slash 3A inhibitor. Okay, and there are many glycoprotein 2B slash 3A inhibitors. So these are drugs which will bind to the glycoprotein 2B slash 3A protein and uh, stop uh, the glycoprotein 2B slash 3A being able to bind to fibrinogen, okay? So, if we have our platelet here, okay, and the platelet has the glycoprotein 2B slash 3A protein on its surface here, so this is GP2B slash 3A, then basically, um, these inhibitors are going to bind to the surface of the GP2B slash 3A and stop the GP2B slash 3A from being able to bind to a lobe of fibrinogen, okay? And this means that you're not going to be able to get platelet aggregation. So this, these drugs, these GP2B slash 3A inhibitors, they are going to stop platelet aggregation, okay? Right, so what examples of drugs that bind to the GP2B slash 3A uh, receptor do we have? Well, there are three which I know, uh, and one of them is known as eptifibatide, okay? So eptifibatide, 
The next is known as tirofiban. Okay, and eptifibatide is a small little uh, polypeptide, basically, whereas tirofiban is a non-peptide uh, molecule which will bind to uh, GP2B slash 3A. The final drug is actually an antibody, a monoclonal antibody against the glycoprotein 2B slash 3A, and it's known as abciximab. So all three of these drugs, eptifibatide, tirofiban, and abciximab, they will all bind to the glycoprotein 2B slash 3A and stop it from being able to bind to uh, the fibrin lobe of fibrinogen. Okay, so let's view this in the context of uh, the uh, thrombotic pathway. Okay, so in order to get platelets aggregating together, what you need is this rise in thromboxane A2, and then thromboxane A2 will activate the thromboxane A2 receptors on the platelets, and for a downstream pathway, the thromboxane A2 receptor will activate the glycoprotein 2B3A so that it's now capable of binding to a lobe of fibrinogen, and this is how platelets stick to one another. So, if you've got a molecule that's going to bind to the glycoprotein 2B slash 3A, which will mean that it's not capable of binding to fibrinogen even after activation by uh, the thromboxane A2 pathway. Uh, then it's going to stop platelets from being able to aggregate. So let's review what you will still what will still happen in thrombosis, even if you've got these uh, GP2B slash 3A inhibitors, and what won't happen. So you'll still get the initial platelet adhesion to the endothelial cells. Uh, you'll still get platelet activation, so they'll start chucking out ADP and thromboxane A2. You'll trigger off the chain reaction, okay? So you'll get the huge amounts of thromboxane A2 being produced. This will cause vasoconstriction of the blood vessel. However, now it's not going to activate platelet aggregation because uh, the GP2B slash 3A protein has stuck onto its surface uh, the... Um, um, the inhibitor, so either eptifibatide, tirofiban, or abciximab. So basically, platelets are not going to stick to one another. However, the platelets can still adhere to the initial endothelium because remember, it's a different uh, protein that is involved in that binding to the endothelium. Uh, for instance, it may well be glycoprotein 1B95, which binds to von Willebrand factor. Okay, so often that is what happens um, to trigger platelet adhesion on these endothelial cells. So these endothelial cells over the atherosclerotic plaque will dysfunction so much that they end up putting uh, von Willebrand factor on that apical membrane, and then the platelets can adhere there. Okay, so you will get platelet adhesion, you will get thromboxane A2 going up, you will get vasoconstriction, but you won't get platelet aggregation, so you won't build up a large mass of platelets, which is going to occlude the blood vessel. Uh, and then you may well still get coagulation. We haven't done anything to stop coagulation, uh, but what use is coagulation if it doesn't have a bunch of platelets to tie together? It's just going to make a bunch of strands, and that's not great, but it's not going to uh, form a thrombus if we haven't got the platelets aggregating together. So this is going to stop the formation of a thrombus, and that's how it's an antithrombotic drug. Well, all three of them are antithrombotic drugs. Okay, so eptifibatide, tirofiban, and abciximab, they are all the GP2B slash 3A inhibitors. Okay, so the next drug I want to talk about is, uh, we go, well, actually, I'll just do an introduction now. So, those are the drugs that target the um, platelet mechanisms, okay? So, we've had clopidogrel, aspirin, um, and these GP2B slash 3A inhibitors. They all uh, attack the platelets, um, so they st either stop platelet activation in the case of uh, clopidogrel, uh, they stop the release of thromboxane A2 in the case of aspirin, and they stop uh, the actual aggregation in the case of eptifibatide, tirofiban, and abciximab. Now we're going to move on to anticoagulants, drugs which bl are have antithrombotic effects through stopping the coagulation cascades. So, let's move on to the other side and discuss our first anticoagulant. So, heparin is going to be our first anticoagulant. Okay, so anticoagulant. And to understand how heparin is going to work, uh, we need to uh, discuss 
um, something known as antithrombin-3. Okay, so basically, healthy endothelial cells have a mechanism, well, they have many mechanisms for preventing thrombosis from occurring within them, okay? Uh, so, what we now want to see is this antithrombin-3 mechanism for preventing thrombosis from occurring within them, okay? So, basically, the liver, and let me just finish this drawing of this endothelial cell. So, here's the basement membrane again, in turquoise. So, basically, the liver produces a protein known as antithrombin-3, often abbreviated to AT3. So, this stands for antithrombin-3. Okay, and uh, when people um, say antithrombin with no number after it, you can generally assume that it, it, they mean antithrombin-3. So basically there are three other antithrombins. So there is antithrombin-1, antithrombin-2, and antithrombin-4, as well as antithrombin-3. However, the other three are pretty trivial. Antithrombin 1 may well have some significant role, but antithrombin 2 and 4 have just uh, been lost into scientific history. They're not important. So, antithrombin 3 is the only one that has actually been uh, conserved and is still taught to medical students because it's the only one that's still Im considered important. So, often people will just say antithrombin. And what they will mean is antithrombin-3, because the only important antithrombin is antithrombin-3. So, the liver makes this protein called antithrombin-3, and it's uh, dumped into the blood, basically. Now, the endothelial cells have a polysaccharide on their surface, which I'll show by this light green colour here. And this polysaccharide is known as heparan sulfate. Okay, so on the apical surface of the endothelial cells, they have a polysaccharide known as heparan sulfate, and this is not the same as heparin, although it's very related to heparin. Okay, so the uh, antithrombin-3 can bind to the heparan sulfate, so here comes the antithrombin-3, and I'll colour it in in blue. So this is our antithrombin-3, now bound to our heparan sulfate here. And once it's been, once it's bound to the heparan sulfate on endothelial cells, and I want to give that endothelial cell a nucleus. Um, once it's bound to the uh, heparan sulfate on our endothelial cells, the antithrombin three becomes active. So previously, the form that is released into the blood by the liver is inactive. However, once it's bound to the heparan sulfate, which is on the surface of the endothelial cells, it becomes active. Now. When it's active, it inhibits a whole bunch of the coagulation factors. So, which coagulation factors does it inhibit? Okay, well, its name tells you one of the coagulation factors it inhibits. It inhibits thrombin. Thrombin is one of the, well, it's the most important, arguably, well, maybe fibrin, um, but Thrombin is one of the most important coagulation factors. It's right at the end of the coagulation cascade. It's both of them, both the intrinsic and extrinsic coagulation cascade, lead to the activation of thrombin, which is then going to convert fibrinogen into fibrin, which will then uh, be converted into fibrin strands by factor 13a. So let me just remind you that thrombin once you've activated thrombin, and also remember that thrombin is also called factor 2a, that thrombin converts fibrinogen, okay, which remember is this inert protein within the blood, fibrinogen, uh, called factor 1, into fibrin, or factor 1a, okay, and then uh, factor 1a is then assembled into fibrin polymers, or a fibrin strand by a uh, factor 13a, which is produced by uh, thrombin acting on factor 13. Okay, so here is factor 13a, which catalyzes this reaction, and it's produced from factor 13, um, which is um, turned into factor 13a by thrombin. Okay, so thrombin is an extremely important coagulation factor, thrombin, factor 2a. So if you get 
activation of thrombin in the bloodstream, what's going to happen? Well, sorry, if you get activation of factor 2, which is called prothrombin, so remember, thrombin comes from prothrombin, which is the inactive form of the enzyme, the zymogen, okay, uh, or also known as factor 2. Uh, if you get this activation of factor 2 to 2A, then it's going to produce fibrin by, through this pathway. It's going to do the first conversion, where it converts fibrinogen into fibrin, and then it's also going to activate 13, which will then assemble the fibrin into fibrin strands. Okay, so antithrombin-3 is going to inhibit any thrombin that is formed within the bloodstream. Okay, and we'll see its other targets in the next video.